So what is Selenium Web Driver, friends? So Selenium Web Driver is the advanced form of Selenium, which is currently there in the market, and development is going on Selenium Web Driver API only. So Selenium RC has been deprecated. We saw and that when we created a Selenium class across sign was coming on it. It was giving us a warning that there is no development done on it right now. And whatever things we have done in RC that has also been integrated in web driver to provide backward compatibility. Okay. So if something has already been done in RC as a complete project. So if someone comes tomorrow and asks you that, okay, we are coming with, uh, with a new tool, Google came with a new tool called web driver, they are saying today that no, there will not be any development on RC, then companies will say, okay, we spent so much time on uh, and money on the uh, project, then what to do? It will be a drastic change. Who will go back and change the code? So change in the code is very minimal with, I should say, if uh, like a 2% or 3% of change you have to do, other part of the code is, will be same. Okay, so we'll see the migration of RC to web driver, not in module 3 because module 3 is specifically for web driver. In the next module, we'll see how we are migrating from RC to web driver. Okay, so we'll see the architecture and we know that uh, like in web driver, there is no intermediate, there is no server. So in web driver, Selenium web driver, we won't be running any RC server. The web driver will directly interact with the browser and in the industry, right now in the industry, all the browse, all the companies who are making these browsers are providing native support for Selenium. Okay. So the Selenium web driver can directly inject its queries to the browser and browser can automatically means it will handle all the queries and reply back to the uh, web server. Okay. Sorry, web driver. So there will be a direct interaction between you and your browser, so the execution will be fast. Okay. So that was about this slide. So why Selenium Web Driver? As we have already discussed, friends, like uh, whatever there were some drawbacks in RC that was not there and it was not able to handle advanced uh, applications which were built and which were dynamic. So uh, it was failing in most of the scenarios, so Google built and added few more features to it because it was not ThoughtWorks who worked on, who fixed it, okay. It was Google who fixed it and they gave a new name. If it would have been like the company who came with RC is doing work on the same, it wouldn't have said like there is a change, okay. So, but a new company called Google came as you guys know, Google, so they built on it and they, they gave the name WebDriver. So they merged both the projects. The API of RC was not good and it was uh, the architecture of the RC was uh, no, not that good because it was in between the server was coming and it was uh, the execution speed was slow. Okay. So as we discussed it is it can handle advanced web applications, dynamic web applications and even you, even in Selenium web driver, you can open two or three pages like from one page, I click on some link, it will open a new window, I'll switch to the new window, I'll do something there, I'll close that window, I'll come back to the previous window and I'll continue my application. So these are the few examples of the advanced form that you can do it in Selenium, okay. You can interact with the app, you can handle the drop downs easily in RC, there was a problem in handling drop down handling of pop-up boxes, taking screenshots. So there are a very big list of advanced features. So in the coming slides, we'll see. Okay. And the big problem was the API of RC was not good. It was creating a confusion for the developers that which one to take, which one not to take. Okay. But functionality wise, if I'll say the basic aim is in web driver is also same. It, it will, it is also supporting multiple programming languages. It is also, it, the automation can be done on multiple browsers for cross browser testing and it also it can also be run on multiple operating systems okay so this is just an example so before what we were doing so like if i want to run my script on chrome if i i'll change the name in my test case star chrome google chrome if i want to run on another browser like firefox i'll give the firefox with an absolute path, okay. So it was like 
whatever functionality was there, whatever things the RC was doing, it was very much dependent on the browser which is installed on the system. Okay, so secure from security point of view, RC was not good. But in web driver, web driver comes with a specific driver. Why the driver name came? Because each browser has its own driver. That's why we say web driver. Okay, Chrome has its own driver. I has its own driver. Firefox has its default. We don't specif specify because that is the default settings. And Safari has an own driver. Even Android and iPhone has their own driver. So when we do any testing on the application, we first launch the driver and on that we do the testing. Okay, so how it will help from security point of view? We actually, no one can in between interact with the application. Like if I am doing some uh, financial transaction and uh, if someone in between wants to run his JavaScript in my uh, transaction process so that he can read my password and user details, it won't be possible. Because already the port number has been occupied, no other person can access that port number. Okay, So we will see what does that port number mean. No one can in between come to my execution and stop. Okay. So for each of the browser, we have a driver here. So before we do testing, we'll first launch the driver and then do the testing. Pavel has a question, but even in RC, we mentioned the browser name. Yes, Pavel, we were mentioning the browser name, but from security point of view, it was launching the web server in RC. But thing was that if you want to do launch uh, some specific application, you need to do it through RC. Okay, so. It was not that good providing a security. Even our thoughtworks also tried to provide a security, but internally the browser was not that much strong to handle the JavaScript. Okay, like anyone can go through your server, read your server settings, and interact with it. Means any other person can know the details through the server and do it. So from security point of view, internally the API was not that strong, and people have faced the problem. But in Selenium uh, web driver, they have a specific driver itself. Okay, if I launch to want to run three different browsers, I'll uh, launch three different drivers, and my execution will be done in an isolated way. Okay, in RC also it was there, but thing was that the they were launching a server, and then they were launching the web application in it. So overall architecture was slow, and there were bugs in the uh, API which was not good from security point of view. Web driver suppose any new browser comes to market does it support no no palani. <laughs> so that was uh, this is uh, one of the I should say not a drawback exactly but yes if you tell me that uh, today there is a update in the Firefox because Firefox update keeps on coming for every a month for every month some upgrade will come or for every 50 in uh, like 15 days or 20 days some update will come in. So web driver will not support. You have to wait it, wait for at least a month. They'll release it with the new uh, patches because web driver is me means there is a separate actually an exe file which you have to download it from the Selenium official website and then you can proceed. So if today to any new version is coming, no, it will not support. Uh, the driver will not be supporting it. Okay, so that will be a problem. Support for HTML unit browser. Anuj is saying that it will support HTML unit browser. Yes, Anuj, Selenium only supports HTML unit browser. Okay. Uh, okay, Anuj. Palani, but in RC, no. Uh, uh, like Palani is saying that in RC, if any new version of the browser is coming, it will support. Yes, Palani, it will support because it has nothing to do with that uh, settings of the browser. Okay. So. You will come to know soon that how the driver is helpful because uh, people are coming up. There are lots of security constraints for there. Okay, in the browser. So what it was doing actually, it was doing an isolated execution. I accept. Okay, it was launching a through server. It was launching a separate browser, and it was doing and it was solving the <coughs> uh, domain communication problem like single uh, host origin policy it was solving but thing was that the browser itself was your system browser okay so there was no uh, security point of view was there okay execution was done in an isolation okay but somewhere it was failing 
ओके पालनी इन आरसी फाइव से एनी वर्जन एनी ब्राउजर केम देर बेसिक पंडा वॉज जस्ट टू पुट द जावा स्क्रिप्ट इन द ब्राउजर थ्रू सर्वर ओके सो इट वॉज सपोर्टिंग मोर ब्राउजर बट फ्यू बक्स वर देर एंड देर वर लॉट्स ऑफ फीचर दैट द आर सी वॉज नॉट सपोर्टिंग सो द पीपल द कंपनीज आर डिजाइनिंग अ वेब ड्राइवर इन सच अ वे दैट वॉट एवर एडवांस फीचर एंड न्यू techniques are there they are just designing it and uh, put uh, putting it on the selenium website from there you can download it and use it okay so you have, you have to keep on upgrading your driver so that you can use the additional features of it okay selenium web driver i should say whatever feature rc was having it is just an add on to it with few more uh, fixes uh, to that okay so if you say that uh, it is rc was supporting a wide range of browsers no i should not say it in that way but yeah even web driver is also supporting a huge range of browsers okay okay palani okay <clears throat> anuj is saying okay i'll answer your question palani just okay palani is saying what is the security problem in rc okay uh, like if you like i take an example when you do a transaction or like someone can because there was no uh, internally Uh, there was no security feature for it okay that in rc there is a security feature because browser was what it was your system browser okay when you were running your script you were uh, like you are not running it on uh, like any security parameters you are not setting it okay so it was like anyone can uh, go to your uh, go through your execution and read it if they have already done some means anyone can read out your data what you were doing it maybe there were chances okay so it was like <clears throat> okay let me take an example here uh, let's take a case that uh, do, they solved the single point origin policy but thing is that when they were doing an execution on their own application the data which were getting transferred was not in an encrypted form okay it was uh, like that usually the data gets passed was uh, getting passed okay through the uh, internally through the server because server was actually knowing everything whatever data you are going to send so it was just passing it to the web browser then the execution was done in an isolated way let's take a case that someone is tracking your execution between your server and your uh, your browser then in that case it will create a problem so what is exactly selenium web driver and selenium rc okay we saw the difference in the architecture that in between some server was there communicating through server was creating a problem but uh, in selenium web driver there is no as such concept called selenium web uh, rc server okay but it will come into picture with web driver also but that is in grid so we'll see when rc when web driver is using selenium server okay but as of now in the default architecture there is no uh, Uh, server in between so that's the reason it is faster than that and what is the other reason we are not actually the, the, the we are not actually converting our code so that our browser can understand right now in web driver the there is a default support for the browser uh, server uh, like it is providing a default support for all the versions of the browser so i should say a native support for the web driver and selenium that's the reason it is fast okay so there is a direct interaction of the user with the browser and in between uh, act as a communication mode so to interact with the user so it is having a simpler and better api we will see in the demo today and it supports for html units so html unit browser is what it will actually not load the browser like the we, the browser will not be loaded but your execution will be done okay so we will see some proof or proof of concept that is it actually loading the browser backend and doing the testing but there was no concept of html unit in rc and even in other automation tools as well so you can here you can see the basic architecture diagram so it can be any tool it can be ide it can be eclipse it can be any dotnet platform java platform python platform okay this is going to be your code and this is will be this will be your server so there is one on one communication between you and your browser okay so it will send your its request to the browser and browser will understand it and it will do the execution and through http port it will respond back to the uh, server okay so from here you can do anything with the browser okay so there were many features and uh, that was 
blocking the RC to interact with the browser because there is a person sitting in between. First time, make sure that the person should understand what I'm trying to say, and then that person will interact with the browser. So RC was uh, Selenium RC servers was not uh, able to handle all the requests what was coming. Okay, its job is just to convert it into the JavaScript. Okay, so when internally the there was a compiler that always needs to be updated and it should make sure that the communication should be done. So what they thought rather than working on the driver and at the same time they have to work on the browser itself so that it should understand whatever form of the JavaScript and new form new features are coming. Why not to remove the server from there and make browser itself understand what I'm trying to say. So that was the question Google raised it. Why should we go with the Selenium RC server if we can directly do an isolated execution and directly communicate with the browser. Okay. So you can do your you can write your code here, run launch the browser and with the help of Selenium Grid even on the same system also I'll show you that how can you do how can you do execution on multiple systems okay so I have one system in California I have one system in Delhi I have one system in Sydney so at the same time on three different systems I can do the execution okay so the data which will be coming so how what this region says one a very basic example like a quick use case like the data what this test script will use it will use the Sydney data for execution. What, whatever data this test case is going to use, it is going to use the California data and this data is going to, this will going to use the India Delhi data. So the database is fixed, the script is same, the query is same, they just need, they will just change the location and it will load the data from the database and it will do the execution. This is one of the use case that keeps comes to my mind. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. So launch of browser, here we, in RC server, we need, we were actually interacting with the, we first we need to launch the server and if my server, if in any case, yes, there is one more scenario, what was the problem in RC, if my server goes down, because it is running 24 by 7, because of any reason, that if my server goes down, then the scripts which was already in the queue will fail and there is no execution in it. Right now, we are taking a very like POC uh, types of examples like proof of concept just to see that what or how the other things are working. But there are there were chances that the RC server was used to go down like if any system interruption will come it will close it. Okay. It used to run occupy the RAM a lot because when if when I am trying to run a bunch of data the RC server used to occupy the RAM and it used to do a lot of things because whatever things we do that gets printed in the command prompt or in the log file. Okay, so it was occupying a uh, lots of space of the RAM, and because of that, it gets shut down uh, most of the time. Okay, when you do bulk testing, but in web driver we don't have nothing as a concept called Selenium server. We actually we have a specific driver for each of my browser. If I want to do an execution, I'll just launch my specific browser, and that only I'll do, I'll do the testing. Again, if you ask me to uh, do a second execution, I won't touch that driver. I'll launch a separate driver with a unique port number. In that only the execution will be done. So in between, there will not be any communication. So the, in this way, the execution and the total time of execution was much, much, much faster than RC. Okay. Uh, like in uh, Selenium RC has RC server which acts as an HTTP proxy for web requests. So RC server was doing communication. It, it needs to send the, the get the request from your code and send it to the browser. Then again take the request and send it back to the uh, your code. Okay, so that your code can understand. But here the browser itself is providing this native support. You don't the the browser you don't have to. There is nothing as such concept called conversion in between. You can directly interact with the browser. Okay. So Selenium web driver and Selenium server. So when Selenium web driver will take help of Selenium server. So when you do, okay, let, let me go point by point so that there should not be any confusion. Okay. So till this slide uh, regarding the uh, why RC and why what is web driver is clear. Okay. Like till this slide the definition is completed and uh, the concept is clear that uh, what is web driver and why we are going to it. Okay. Pavel has a question. Can we get runtime log in web driver like we did in RC? Uh, Pavel, there is nothing uh, like uh, 
whatever things gets generated in the log, it is interacting with the browser and then it is coming back like whatever request you got. All those things are customized. You do it in your way. Like once you get the log and you are launching a browser, you will get a response back to you. It will come to you only. Okay. So it is you that who have to do some reporting. Like in RC, it was generating a log file and reports, but in WebDriver, it, it is not generating any log file and report. That is, that is I should say, maybe a one of the, I won't say directly a drawback, but it is like they have done it in a customized way. Before, RC was generating those kinds of reports because actually a communication was uh, doing between you and your uh, server. But in WebDriver, it doesn't. It will not generate any kind of report. Okay? It, it they have they are they have done it in such a way that the things are very much stable and uh, done it in that way. So uh, what? How can you understand? How you will get the response? You have to actually get the uh, response that okay, the browser is loaded. So it will you will get some uh, thing as an object instance return from your browser, and you will understand okay, things has been done. So whatever response you get, you can customize your thing. So we'll see it in the demo how we we'll get it. WebDriver in that there is no auto generation of report in RC first. Yeah. So okay, let me close this window. Okay. So when WebDriver will take help of Selenium server, when we will be doing Selenium, when we will be doing the uh, like do multi parallel execution using Selenium grid. Okay. Why? So most of the times you will be testing like web applications on your local machine. Okay. So when you are doing any execution on local machine, you don't need any web server or you don't need to specify it. Okay. Web driver itself will handle it. Okay. So you in that case you don't need RC server. But sometimes when you want to do an execution on a remote machine, in that case you need RC server. Why you need an RC server? Like uh, okay, let me quickly draw a diagram for you guys. Okay, so that the picture will be clear. Let me take red. No, okay. IDE red. You you will understand the history of you once this tag. It, this diagram will be clear the history of Selenium. Like why how things are coming. What is why it is this guy is taking now the help of web driver. Okay, when it should. So it was Selenium RC. Then Selenium IDE was there. And we have concept called Grid1. So when we were doing, when like Grid1 was a very basic thing. It was they were just doing it, writing it, everything from scratch. And when RC was doing, they were taking help of Selenium server so that they can do multiple execution on parallel ex sorry parallel execution on remote machine so like when selenium uh, web driver came that time there was no concept for grid because they, they it was not before supporting grid okay so but to do a parallel execution they also need some if if I want to connect to a remote machine, I need to pass the IP address. Okay, so WebDriver was doing local execution, but here uh, how this grid is helping? So this grid is called grid two. Okay, that is an advanced form of the grid. So here we are actually not <coughs> doing a parallel. That means communicating everything to the browser. This grid is actually helping me to give me a entry to the machine. So this web driver will actually pass the IP address and the details to this. One second. Yeah. So this web driver will pass the IP address, port number and some details so that it should connect to that machine. So here Selenium, here web, here server is helping the web driver so that we can connect to the machine okay once it is connected it will pass the bulk data to the to that machine and in that machine it will launch the browser and it will do the execution so after then it will be a complete separate execution and then it will come back 
just rep uh, reply back to this machine. Okay, done. That's it. So it, the execution which is done on the different machines, which you can see, like I have said, well, sorry, I need to do a, a different on four different machines, I have three different machines or four different machines I have, I need to do it. So that time the Selenium was taking help so that it can interact get into those machines and then execution will be done on that those machines and they will reply back to the Selenium server through the uh, Selenium uh, RC server. Okay. So within WebDriver <laughs> there was no uh, support for uh, launching uh, like uh, there is nothing as well because your program will run in that program before uh, you want to connect to a remote server you need to launch a grid to the new form of the server and through that you will do the communication. Okay, so note that while testing an application on a remote machine, command from web driver go to RC server which is then interpreted on remote machine to automate the browser. So when we are doing uh, our grid uh, execution, parallel execution, that time we are using RC server. Okay, so where your RC server will be running, it will be running on the uh, system from where you are actually firing the request. Okay, it, it is not going to be on multiple system. It, is, it will be on your system and through your system the data will be going to that uh, uh, remote machine. Okay, friends. So <coughs> this is the basic architecture. Okay, Ruchi has a question. So web driver will be sending commands in form of JavaScript. <coughs> yes, and that will be in encoded format. Okay, because why it will be in encoded format? Because you are passing your IP address, you are passing the port number, you are passing the credentials to log in, and you are passing the bunch of the data which is going to be executed here. Okay, okay, Ruchi. So that will be in a secured form. It it won't pass the data like in uh, if some of you would have heard about get and post. If uh, you know about uh, like web applications in JSP or .NET, ASP.NET, when we pass the credentials, we don't pass it through GET because your data is uh, goes through the URL. So we send it through POST so the people cannot see it. Okay. 